What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the BTR Garage. My name is Justin. In today's video, we're gonna be installing a Jackson Racing oil cooler on my 2022 Toyota GR86. Let's go ahead and get started. So up until this point, we have been driving my GR86 with the OEM heat exchanger on the car, which acts as an oil cooler, and it does a pretty good job, to be honest. We've had the car over a year now, 10,000 miles, nine or 10 track days, many, many autocross events on the car, some road trips as well. But on the track, I haven't seen oil temperatures above the 250 degrees mark on the car. If it does go over 250, it's really rare and for a short period of time in really high ambient temperatures. But overall, the oil temperatures stay in that 240 to 250 range. I've had two Blackstone oil analysis done in that period of time, and both of the analysis came back really good. No issues found. In fact, Blackstone even said to drive the car longer <laughs> between oil changes. So instead of every 3,000 miles, they said run the car longer on the oil to 5,000 miles. So we may do that. We may not. I don't know. I'm getting close to another oil change here. Uh, we're going to keep the same oil in the car for the short term, just because I want to see what the temperatures are like with the same oil in the car. But anyways, adding the oil cooler is a great peace of mind. Should lower our temperatures quite a bit. In fact, we'll do some testing to see just what temperatures we get with the Jackson Racing oil cooler on the track and compare those to the oil temperatures that we had previously with just the OEM heat exchanger. So enough talking, let's go ahead and get this thing installed. We gotta get the car up on the quick jack, we gotta get the front bumper off, assemble the oil cooler and shroud, and then get everything installed and the lines routed. So quite a bit of work to do. Jackson Racing has a really good detailed manual that shows you exactly what to do. We'll follow that step by step and show you some tips and tricks along the way. And actually, before we get started, I'm gonna show you all of the parts that came in the Jackson Racing kit. This thing was super well put together. And like I said, we have a nice Jackson Racing installation manual that has all of the details on how to install the oil cooler, colored pictures, etc., etc. Very nice thing to have. We have the Cetrab oil cooler itself. So this is the unit we'll mount in the bumper where the oil actually goes through one end, comes out the other as it's being pumped through the oiling system. We have the nice metal mounting bracket with the JR logo built into it, pretty cool. We'll use this to mount the oil cooler to the car. We have our oil cooler hoses, a really long one <laughs> right here, which will go to the far side of the oil cooler and then back to the oil filter housing and then a shorter version as well. I did buy the shroud for the oil cooler itself. That's what these metal panels are for. It'll be something like this, and then the oil cooler will sit in the back of it. I'll show you how it goes together. But this helps funnel the air directly into the oil cooler. It's an add-on. This doesn't come with the kit by default. And then we have the parts for the oil filter housing itself. So this is an adapter plate that will bolt on to the stock heat exchanger or oil filter housing. And then you have the unit itself right here where the hose is attached to, and this is what circulates the oil in and out of the oil cooler. So both of these pieces kind of sit on top of the oil filter housing. We'll go over briefly some of the tools that you're gonna need for this job. The Jackson Racing oil cooler instructions have a pretty detailed list of what tools you're gonna need. I'll go over them at a high level here and some of the specialty tools you're gonna want. Of course, you're gonna want some screwdrivers, flathead, and Phillips head and trim remover tools. These are the important ones. So a trim remover tool similar to this one. There's lots of plastic clips and things that we wanna remove. These ones in particular right here, these are push pin style plastic clip removers. These are a specialty tool. You're definitely gonna want a set of these. They are unique to the pins that are installed on the car or the plastic clips. If you don't have these, you're gonna damage those pins when you take them out. So it's a really good idea to have a set of those. Everything else is pretty common. You're gonna want assorted wrenches, assorted sockets like this here, a pair of pliers, an adjustable wrench or a pipe wrench like this one here. You're gonna want torque wrenches, both in pound feet as well as inch pounds. Metric Allen key wrenches like this set here. You're gonna need extra oil, not really a tool, but you need about an additional quart of oil to fill up the oil cooler and the oil hoses that are in the kit. So make sure you have that and check your oil, obviously, after you refill it when you're done. That kind of covers the tools. Let's get the car up in the air and start working. So an easy way to keep track of where all of these clips belong is to use some colored Sharpies like these here. I have a bronze one and a silver one because some of these clips are different styles. So you can use a silver Sharpie to mark one of the clips and then just put a little mark on the bumper as well on the underside. And then for the different style, use something like the bronze, put a little mark on it and a mark next to the bumper, just so you know 
where they came out of exactly and where they go back when you reassemble things. The clips here on the back of the fender well are a little bit different. Remember these three right here are the style where you push in the center of the clip and then pull it out. So just grab a little screwdriver, push it till it pops. Grab your little clip removal tool like this one here and they'll pop right out. The one on the bottom here will use our specialty push pin tool that I talked about a bit ago. Clamp it around the sides squeeze and pops right out so it's super simple with that tool. We're also going to reach in behind the fender well and unplug the clip for the light here on the side. Set that aside. Moving up to the engine bay we're going to remove this top bracket here that holds the top of the bumper on. You have a couple of little clips like these guys here and then some 10 millimeter bolts. We're going to pop all of those off. So now with all of the clips removed from both the bottom and the top of the bumper as well as those sides on the wheel well, we should be able to go over to each side and start pulling the bumper away and detach it from the front of the car. It should just snap and pull off. I think it's a little different on these cars than on the old cars, but let's go ahead and start pulling away at it and get the bumper off. To remove the bumper, you're gonna to wanna to grab kind of high up on the top of the bumper here where this seam is. So grab this corner down here. It helps if you fish your fingers kind of behind the fender liner on the inside here. And then just start pulling outward right here. And you'll see that snap off. There's a little clip hole right there. And then just kind of gently pull away and your entire bumper <laughs> it falls off. With the bumper off, we're gonna remove this lower plastic shroud. This normally sits right up underneath there like that. There's just some more plastic clips that hold it on over here and then over on the ends. We're gonna pop this last one off and then it'll fall away. And then also this one here. The bottom radiator bracket is now removed. We're gonna go over here and remove the ambient air temperature sensor. It's got a little clip on the back. The instructions say to flip it over to this side and then zip tie it, so we're gonna do that. Next, we have to remove the driver's side headlamp. There's a few bolts and even a clip. So a couple bolts down here on the side, a clip down here on the bottom, a bolt underneath down over here, then of course the two bolts on the top. I believe that's everything. <laughs> we'll go ahead and start taking those apart. We also have to remove the headlight clips in the back of the housing. Removing the air box is next. Yes, we have to take this out as well. Pretty simple. There's just a bolt down below behind the air box, two of them up on top. And then we have to remove the intake hose on the end of the air box as well as the clip or the plug for the airflow sensor. All right, with all of that stuff finally done, we've got the car taken apart. We're ready to install the Jackson Racing oil cooler parts. We're gonna start off in the engine bay by removing the oil filter. Once we get that filter off, we're gonna start installing these parts here, this guy, and then followed by the other pieces for the oil cooler line housing. So basically follow the JR instructions, but we're gonna walk you through it as well here. So let's get the camera set up. We're gonna put some grease on this O-ring for the instructions. Drop that down on top. Next, we're gonna grab the oil cooler adapter. We're just gonna set this here for the moment. We gotta put the caps and the AN fittings on there. And with the included lubrication that comes in the kits or the assembly lube, we're gonna lube up these little brown O-rings here on each of the fittings. So the AN fittings go on the bottom portion and then the caps themselves 
These go onto the top. So we're gonna grease up these O-rings, put them in place. Grease up this O-ring as well. And we'll take the oil cooler adapter, lay it down on top of the other sandwich plates. Take our long bolts, slide that down the center. And we should be able to thread it on. One of the key parts here is now orienting the direction of the oil filter housing, or the oil cooler adapter housing, so that the lines are pointing towards the front of the car. You can look ahead in the manual to get an idea of which direction they need to be facing. Basically, they need to be able to clear the air box when it's back in position here, and also get underneath this hose and through the front of the car. We'll snug down the plugs and the AN fittings as well. This is where you need a gigantic socket, a 29 millimeter for these top ones, and a 27 deep for the bottom ones, or you can use an adjustable wrench as well, something like this if you don't have those giant sockets. Removing the horn is next. It's just this small little 10 millimeter bolt here. This is what we'll use to mount the black bracket to this guy here. And there's another hole on this side that we'll put a screw into, I believe it's this one right here. That will go through this hole on the mounting bracket and then the oil cooler itself will ultimately mount up to these guys here. But let's get that horn off and the other bolt in place. We'll start putting together the mounting bracket that goes to the top of the frame rail here. We're gonna grab this little stud that is only threads. There is a short set on the top with a little divider and then a longer set on the bottom. We're gonna put thread lock on the top and thread this into the hole where we removed the horn screw. So thread that up there by hand until it bottoms out. You obviously don't wanna grab that with a pair of pliers or anything. So bottom it out by hand. Next, we're gonna grab the little spacer that came in the kits. We're gonna stick this over that stud, follow it with the horn brackets, and then lastly, put one of the nylon lock nuts on to hold everything in. You're gonna leave that a little bit loose up there because in a minute, once we get the other side put on, when we mount the bracket here, this little gap goes up in between the spacer and the horn bracket. When you stick it up in there and I'll have a close up of what that looks like. Next thing we're gonna do is grab one of these 25 millimeter bolts with a washer. And this bolt is different than all the others that has no threads at the top. And then what we have to do is actually fish that in here. And there's a hole down there, you can see it. It shows up on the bottom of the frame rail. This bolt basically goes down in that hole and that's what we'll attach the mounting bracket to. And the way you get it in there is by fishing it through here and then down into the hole. So I'm gonna do that. And the trick to doing this, if you hold the bolt between your fingers like that, and I already placed the washer in there over the hole, you can just scoot it over and then kind of stick your fingers in there with the bolts hanging down. We got it lined up in the hole, drop it down and that's kind of how it works. And then it sticks out down below just like that. Next, we'll grab our mounting brackets. And again, this is now the end where we're gonna take that little notch in the bracket and we're gonna stick it up over here on the horn side. It goes in between the horn bracket and the spacer. So you kinda gotta finagle it in there between those two pieces. Once that passenger side is in, we're gonna put the driver's side in. We gotta hold the bolts in the frame, push the mount bracket up, we're gonna grab a washer and one of the nylon nuts. And we're probably gonna have to hold the bolt down again. This will be fun. Having a helper here will be easier. You can have them hold down the bolt, but you can do it by yourself. We'll show you what that looks like before we tighten everything up here. Now we can start assembling the shroud around the oil cooler. We've got our hardware over here that will help us bolt the top of the cooler to the mounting bracket and then the bottom of the cooler to the shroud. We've got the other parts of the shroud behind it, but 
First, I'm gonna put on these little foam strips, one on the bottom and then one on the top. The one on the top has a notch or cut in it. It's cut at an angle so it fits on the top just like that. Make sure you put the bottom piece on the same side as the top piece. Next, we'll grab the little rubber sticky isolators. We put these on the top and the bottom of the oil cooler. That way the shroud has something to sandwich up against you. Grab our shroud pieces. The one with the Jackson Racing logo is the one that goes on the bottom. You can kind of set that down there, put the cooler on top of it. We're gonna grab our top and this kind of sits over the top like that. We're gonna put two bolts through, one on each side, and they're kind of temporary. You use the longer bolts for the top, stick one through on each side. And then there are these threaded rubber isolators. These are the ones that go on the underside over here. And we'll thread the bolts into place and it kind of holds it there temporarily because we're gonna take the top one off when we actually put it on the car because this is the bolt that will mount it up into the frame rail. Do the same thing with the bottom. Try to make this so you guys can see what's going on here. Grab our shorter bolt. Slide it through, grab our threaded piece, make sure the rubber part is obviously facing downward because that'll squish, hold things into place. And we do wanna use some of the thread locker that came on the kit for these bottom ones and the top ones. We'll do the top ones when we actually install it up onto the mounts. The bottom ones we can do now. Side pieces to the shroud go on like this. Obviously line up the holes on the top with the narrower hole pattern on the top. And the angled side wants to be pointing towards the cooler. Obviously we're directing air into the cooler. Those guys go on like that. And then these bolts have self-locking nylocks on them, so no need to use thread locker here. You just put these through, put them in place. everything snug down on the shroud we're gonna now grab our oil cooler hoses start with the 47 inch long hose this one attaches to the passenger side of the oil cooler we're gonna drop some of the provided lubricant around the top of the fitting here as well as onto the o-ring on the underside of the fitting and then we'll thread that into the oil port there Now we're gonna remove these bolts on the top that we put on earlier because this is ready to go up into the car. Now before we can install the oil cooler onto the mounting bracket down here, we have to remove this little plastic shroud in the bumper area, this guy right here. And for whatever reason, the instructions don't talk about that. I don't know if they had a car that maybe didn't have that, but we're gonna pop that out. It's just some of those same plastic clips and we'll leave it out because again, that's where those hoses route to go to the oil filter housing. With that stuff out of the way, we can now fish the lines up through between the radiator and the bumper support. So what I'm gonna do is stick the oil cooler box on top of my little chair here and then fish the hoses up into the front of the car. We're gonna put thread locker on all of our bolts that we'll send in through the top up here and then put the little brackets underneath and screw the bolts into that. So 
So we'll route our hoses up through the headlight housing area here. We're gonna put some of the lubricants on the male AN fittings over here. And the long hose is actually the hose that goes onto the outside or the oil filler cap side. I'm gonna take the short hose first, twist the 45 degree fitting here until it is positioned correctly. Grab our long hose. Again, this goes on the oil filler side or towards the driver's side. Fish it up the same way. So we have the hoses routed pretty much where they're going to be. We might need to adjust them a little bit. We're gonna test fit the headlight, make sure it clears. And we also put the sleeve over the hose underneath where the headlight will be. As you can see, we got a zip tie down here as well for the instructions. Test fitting looks pretty good for the most part. So you can see the lines come up underneath there. And then over through the side. The little sleeve is touching the headlight, but not the hose itself. However, I am concerned about this section here, still rubbing up against the metal of the frame. So what I'm gonna do is pull that sleeve back another six inches or so, because once it's under here, it's not actually touching anything. And we should be able to pull that back and add a little more protection on this side. So now that we've confirmed that the hoses will fit under the headlight, we're gonna reinstall the airbox snorkel and then the airbox itself to make sure that the airbox clears the side of these lines. This shroud that we took off earlier, we're gonna discard and not use because it won't fit anymore with the oil cooler hoses in place. We have plenty of airbox clearance, this little gap right here. Now we just wanna orient the hoses on the filter housing just so that we have a little bit more clearance on the filler cap <laughs> as well so we can get that off when it's time to refill the oil but something right about like that works pretty good so we're going to tighten down the sandwich bolt on the top and then also our an fittings here the oil filter sandwich plate bolt we're going to tighten that one down by hand there's no specific torque spec setting in the manual i've read that 25 pound feet is normal but I've also read that you can tighten it down till it hits the metal on metal and then go another turn and a half or turn and a quarter so we'll just kind of do that until it feels snug tighten down our and fittings with everything tightened down we can go ahead and stick our oil filter back on and then we're ready to reinstall the headlights start putting the car back together first to get that headlight in add half a quart of oil and then start it up and check for leaks we'll add our half a quart of oil this does get a little bit tricky i'll have to get an oil funnel that has a longer neck on it but go ahead and add this in and try not to get it on anything <laughs> The manual says you'll need about a quart of extra oil for the oil cooler. So we put this in, get the car started up, check the oil and add oil as necessary. So now we'll go ahead and start up the car and start checking for oil leaks while we let it run for a few minutes. We're gonna check all of the connections up here as well as the sandwich plate down there. And then we'll also check for leaks where the lines connect to the cooler down in that area and then over on the other side as well. So we are all good to go, leak free, all of the fittings 
The sandwich plates on the new oil filter adapter are all good. We just have to check the oil again and then top it off with probably another half a quart or so of oil as the manual calls for. So we'll do that and we'll get the rest of the car put together. I'll spare you guys all of that process. We're gonna go to the closing and we'll catch you in the next video when we have the track results from the oil cooler testing. So there we go, Jackson Racing oil cooler installed on my 2022 GR86. I'm excited to get this thing back out on the track and see just how much of a difference this makes in the oil temperatures. So stick around, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for the follow-up video where we'll show you exactly how much of a difference this oil cooler makes. And like always, if you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, please leave them down below. I would love to hear from you. I do try to respond to everybody's comments. So if you have anything to ask or comment on the video, do hit the comments down below. Like always, stay safe out there. I am checking out. We'll talk to you all next time.